Okay, so we know at this point there's a couple of Red Hat Enterprise Linux derivatives of RHEL, and some of those that you might know of, of course, is Oracle, uh, Linux, uh, Rocky Linux, etc. And another one of those is Euro Linux or Euro Linux. And Euro Linux offers the normal or distribution for servers, uh, which is essentially three packaged uh, RHEL. Um, and in this case, kind of like uh, Oracle, you can download it uh, for free, get the updates and run it without really having to register. Now, one of the products they do that's slightly different is Eurolinux Desktop. And this is what we're going to look at today. And Eurolinux Desktop is built on the let's say server grade uh, software, so in this case, uh, RAL 9.2. And essentially what they've done is they take a snapshot of Euro Linux or RAL and they modify it to be more usable for a desktop experience out of the box. So in this case, they install certain bits of software, they install certain tweaks to GNOME or GNOME and add additional audio codecs, etc. In this case, so that it is more user friendly and you can roll it out, you know, in your business. And if you meet, you can get support for it. So it's kind of in a way for a business or for a desktop and you want that uh, additional stability or peace of mind that you don't have to change something for 10 years. That's where your Linux desktop comes in. Now, with the recent changes to how Red Hat is making they rebuilt available. I don't know how that's going to impact your Linux desktop or any of the new Linux distributions, but today I'm going to install this and let's take a look at it. So, an enterprise desktop uh, with a twist. Uh, new Linux desktop. All right, and it is technically Red Hat 9.2. It's eight super news. 100 gigs here, and I'm just going to call it Euro Linux Desktop and start. Okay, no thanks. And you can see it's actually a live uh, CD. So let's uh, start by installing. One of the Advantages to something like this, of course, is any software for uh, Red Hat 9 or L9 would be supported here. So, I mentioned me Fiora Linux desktop. Just change, just confirm the partitioning. Right, and the only thing I really need to just create a user account. And then make this user admin. So we don't need the root account. I'm going to save this and begin the installation. And we're back. So let's uh, do a quick reboot. And we don't want to tour this. So let's uh, change the settings, uh, the resolution at least. Can be say by keep these changes about um my apologies this is still year linux 9.1 there doesn't look like they've released 9.2 yet uh, and as you can see here we're using a pretty old version of gnome at this point 14.4 and this is the standard year linux desktop uh, or how they've configured it out. So looking out the box, the software that it has is really, really light. Even in the utilities, it's really not too much in here. If we look at the terminal, uh, we can just uh, do your name dash R. So we have uh, kernel 5.14, which is, uh, and of course LTS and the name dash A. So this, of course. Cool. So let's go and 
click on the software store. So we're going to browse the software store and check the software repos. And you can see what they've done is they've enabled FlatHub. So obviously, since this is an enterprise desktop system and you want a desktop software, you're most likely going to use Flatpaks. So it makes sense to have FlatHub automatically enabled. And then of course they have additional packages, AppStream, BaseOS, uh, additional desktop packages have made, CRB, um, and you can also enable the Linux vendor firmware service as well. Okay, uh, because of that, if we were to go and look under Play, for example, let's do that again. You're obviously going to see software that's available, so let's say I click on CRAD, and now we can install it. Uh, I basically can only install it from FlatUp. If I want something such as Steel, uh, Steam is here, but of course Steam is here because of the FlatUp and we can install it, etc. Performance wise though, uh, it uses XFS file system by default here, and it's only new six and a half gigs. Resource spires, only using 1.8 gigs of GNOME. And interestingly enough, they, what they've done is they don't have tweaks pre installed uh, or extensions, but of course, that's how they've customized uh, this. This is, of course, using dash to panel settings, uh, which is GNOME extension. So, yeah, this is essentially what they've done. They've taken an enterprise. Base, they've customized GNOME so it's more user friendly, enabled flat packs, and there's a distribution. You could, if you wanted to do this yourself, so you could take uh, RHEL, even Oracle Linux, Rocky, uh, you could take all of those and, and do the same thing, and you would get the same outcome here. It is nice and this is a pre done package, and if you want, uh, you can get and pay for support, so especially if you have a company. And this type of markets is the people who would use this. Average Linux user is probably going to be better off using something like Fedora just because of the newer packages. But if you want uh, this, you know, go ahead. Of course, with the changes of access to Red Hat sources, RPMs, of course, uh, not talking about the sources that is available for CentOS Stream. Who knows what the future holds, even for Euro Linux? It might be, it's going to be harder for them as well to uh, recompile RHEL. So, right now, I would personally step off and maybe not use this right now, but uh, who knows what the future brings. Anyway, this is actually a pretty short uh, video because there's really not too much to actually show you here. Um, I've already shown you uh, some of the extensions. I mean, they've also added desktop settings as well and desktop icons so and flat packs so there's nothing else really to show you here so i'm gonna stop this video and i'm gonna say thank you for watching and leave your comments below